All right, we want to welcome you to our Tuesday evening time where we spend together, uh, devotion time and prayer time. And we trust that you've had a wonderful day. It's been a beautiful day outside. Hopefully we have a few more of those days this week. And we thank you for tuning in, and we hope that the M story will be one of a blessing to you. If you are following along in your Bible, uh, if you want to uh, take your Bible now and turn to uh, the book of Ephesians in chapter 6, and then also 1 Timothy, uh, excuse me, 2 Timothy chapter 2, and we're going to read some verses of Scripture there to start off with for our devotion tonight in Him history. But before we do, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer once again today, and we trust that uh, uh, that you, I know you, many of you have got some heartaches and some burdens and some cares and some problems that uh, you want to take to the Lord. And so why don't you just do that right now while I'm doing it as well. Father, we want to thank you again for, um, for hearing us and for uh, just loving us. And even though we're many, many times so unlovable and for your care, and as we come to you tonight, asking you to be with um, many of our folks. There's some folks that are listening in, some that are not listening in, that they just need a special touch from you. They just need to hear from you. They just need to know that you're there with them. So I pray that the Holy Spirit that dwells within them would become very real to them even at this hour that they may know that you are with them because you said in your word that i will never leave thee nor forsake thee and so lord i pray that you'll just be with them and encourage them uh, uplift them give them peace that passeth all understanding. Other people may not be able to understand it, but we can if we have that peace. And so Lord, I, I ask that you'd be with uh, some folks on our list. We, we do pray for, continue to pray for uh, the Cheryl family and the home going of Brother Sam. Pray that you'd be with uh, uh, Angela and and uh, the family at this time. And then, dear Lord, we pray for uh, the family of Kenneth Woody, who uh, passed away. And Lord, I pray that you would just be with um, that family in particular. There are no arrangements up to this point in time that we know of has been made, but we pray that you would be with the family and uh, comfort and guide them. There's another couple that needs your help and your direction, and that's uh, Donald and uh, Brenda Reeves. And so, Lord, I pray that you will just uh, intervene and, and uh, uh, Brenda's behalf, and Lord, you might strengthen her and help her, give her direction, guidance in her life. And there, Lord, I, I pray that you'd also be with uh, Sharon Van Etten Lord, strengthen her and help her. Pray you'd be with uh, um, Brother David Burgess. It was good to see him here this Sunday. And I know uh, sometimes it's very, very difficult for him to, to get up and get going. And, and Lord, it was just good to see him here. And I know he expressed that desire uh, that, that joy of being able to be here for just a little bit uh, Sunday morning during the service. And it was great to see Brother Larry Chambers. I know that's his desire to be here as well. I want to pray you'll continue to strengthen him and bless him with his, fit, with his foot. 
that might be healed up properly and completely. I pray that you'd also be with uh, Brother Charles Wetzel, strengthen him as, and his back as well. Pray that you'd be with our missionaries that we had, and Lord, I pray that you'll continue to bless them on deputation, the ones we had here for our conference, and what a blessing they were to us, and we hope that we were a blessing to them. And uh, we pray for our tent revival that's coming up at the end of this month. Lord, we would love to see you uh, just uh, work in our hearts and lives in that tent meeting. And so, Lord, we pray that you'll bless it. Now, Lord, help us tonight as we look into your word for just a few moments and in relation to one of the uh, hymns of the faith that we have sung for many, many years. And, Lord, we're thankful for it. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right, if you've got your Bible, uh, I'd like for you to... Uh, if you've already turned there, Ephesians, we'll read Ephesians chapter 6 first, and then we'll turn over to 2 Timothy, and we'll read some from over there. All right, Ephesians chapter 6, I want to begin reading in verse 11. And the Bible says, Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You know what that word wiles means, the trickery. Um, the, the devil's got all kinds of tricks up his sleeve, so to speak. And he's at, after to each and every one of God's children to try to trip them up. And he's after every person who does not know Christ as Savior to keep them blinded and their hearts and minds so they might not receive the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we're fighting a fight here. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be, may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. And then in the following verses, it gives us the armor in which God gives to us, which is essential for us, as a child of God to uh, live this life, this Christian life, and to fight this Christian fight that we're fighting. Now, I want you to notice in 2 Timothy in chapter 2, it says, 2 Timothy 2 verse 1, Paul is writing to the young preacher Timothy. He says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things which thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So throughout the Bible, especially the New Testament, we have within the pages there and the teaching there, it teaches us that as a child of God, we're in a battle. We are not in a battle with, with other people, though sometimes we do. And, uh, but God says as Christians, we are in a more important battle than sometimes the wars that are being fought all around the globe at any given point in time in history. That the most important battle that we're fighting as a child of God is this fight that we have with the satanic forces. 
For we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers. That's what it's talking about. We're not fighting one another. We're fighting the prince and power of the air. We're fighting the devil. Uh, we see that this is a continual fight. It's one every day. It's one that we cannot dismiss. It's not one that we can get up one morning and, and we look up out at the sky and as the clouds is all, all, all gone away, the skies are nice and blue, the sun is shining, we'll say, my, we're not going to get any rain today. It's going to be wonderful. Uh, now, there's days when we need rain, but we look out there and we see the day's going to be beautiful and it's not going to rain any today. Well, you can't get up that any morning and look out and say, you know, well, you know, the devil's not going to bother me any today because he's going to. He's going to. It's the reason why I guess our, our constant prayer, our everyday prayer, our first prayer that we need to pray, I guess, in the morning is, Lord, I need you again today I need you today I like uh, I think I've told you this before but they were talking to this 90 year old man who had been saved since he was probably about 15 years old so he's been saved about 75 years and they thought man I said uh, you know a brother it must be kind of wonderful you know you know to be that old and to be uh, that old in the Lord you've been a Christian for 75 years and you're 90 years old and said uh, you know said you know when's the last time the devil's really had to uh, been after you and the old fellow says well I I don't think he's bothered me any in the last 10 or or 15 minutes you see it doesn't make any difference how old we are how young we are how strong how weak we are it doesn't matter where we live on this side of the globe or the other side of the globe we're going to be attacked by the devil and with this is a this is an ongoing thing and the song that we're going to be looking at here uh, this evening for uh, our hymn story all started when a young fellow was born in this world in 1834 over in England. His mother and father were sort of well off. His father um, had a terrible accident, fell off a carriage and, and injured himself to where he really couldn't do hardly any manual labor, but so he, as a squire in England, he began to travel a lot across Europe. And as he traveled across Europe, he was able to take his son with him. Now the son's name was uh, Sabin Bearing Gold. Sabin Bearing Gold. Um, we'll just call him Sabin. And Sabin uh, uh, didn't have a chance to uh, settle down and have an education in any one particular area uh, and as far as geographically is concerned and he just had to pick up a little bit of education here and there until finally he did was able to go to uh, Cambridge for a while and get a degree when he was a little bit older but uh, uh, he he really did quite a few things he taught school and and uh, became a, uh, a pastor and he uh, did a lot of different things uh, Sabin did and and uh, I was reading here uh, not too long ago how that uh, when he was uh, about 30 years old he was uh, um, teaching school and when he was teaching school he was uh, had a had rented out uh, and he was also uh, the, kind of the, uh, the, the, the pastor of this little church there in England. 
and uh, he had uh, had a, a little house. It was almost like an apartment, and uh, the downstairs was he had a little living room, and upstairs he had a bedroom, and in the back part uh, of the downstairs there was a little bit of kitchen, and and so what he would do is during the week he would have kind of like a Sunday school for the kids uh, and for adults to come, and he would meet there in the living room for that, and. And then on Sundays, he would go up to the bedroom. It was actually a little bigger than the living room. And so he would have a, a church up there on Sundays. And uh, he, uh, he loved the Word of God. And he loved uh, the things of the Lord. And, and one day in 1864, actually, um, we are we're winding down here in America uh, with the Civil War, and over there he was. Uh, um, it it became what they call Whit Sunday. Now Whit Sunday was uh, uh, what we call Pentecost here. Uh, Pentecost uh, was uh, uh, forty nine days or four or, or seven Sundays after Easter. And, uh, and that was called Whit Sunday. And then they would have Whit Monday uh, right after that, and in which they would usually meet. A lot of churches would meet together for a festival or, and for a time of gathering and, and a time of, uh, of, of fellowship one with another. And so he was getting ready to take uh, some of his... Uh, uh, his congregation there and, and as it turned out it was going to be just some some boys that he was going to be taking uh, some young boys uh, from teenage on down and he was going to take them to this to this Whit Monday or to this festival and so he was going to meet a bunch of other different uh, uh, area churches that were going to meet in this particular uh, area there in England and he um, he thought, well, you know, I'd like to have I'd like to have a song for these uh, these young fellows to sing on the way as we walk over to this Whit Monday festival. And uh, uh, he stayed up during the night trying to figure out what kind of song that uh, he could he could come up with, and lo and behold. He did come up with a pretty good one. And he wrote it out and, and uh, he taught it to the boys early in the morning. And uh, they sang this song as they headed toward the festival to Whit Monday. Now the name of the song is a very familiar song. And we have sung it many, many times here even in our church. And it goes like this, onward Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. Christ the royal master leads against the foe forward into battle, see his banners go. She wanted to give something that was of kind of a militaristic type style because he knew that would uh, uh, interest the boys and as they would march and uh, he had the the front boy carry a cross and he had some of the other ones carry banners which uh, declared the the love of God and the graciousness of God and the power of God and they were marching towards this festival now the sad part about it is is there's many denominations today that have taken this song out of their songbooks and said it is too materialist, uh, 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 militaristic and it's too uh, masculine in its, uh, uh, in its language and it's too brutal, too mean, uh, which is kind of amazing to me, but, but that's what they say. The, this contemporary world would like to give us a new image of God. That's what they want. They don't want the, uh, uh, a strong image of God. They want to, to be God as our mother and to, uh, who would bind up 
your wounds and who would nurture you. And by the way, God uh, himself will nurture us and he will bind up our wounds, but uh, he's, not a, he's not a feminine quality. And yet what, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to feminize even God, feminize our society. And now we find here that uh, um, he writes this song, but it has nothing to do with, with a physical warfare. If you read the words to all four verses of the song, and actually there was actually six verses, but we have four in our, in our song book. Um, it declares that there's a battle going on. And this battle is between, uh, between the Lord and the devil, so to speak. Between the Christian and the, uh, uh, the minions of, of the devil. Uh, the demons of the devil. We find here it says, Onward Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before Christ the royal master leads against the foe forward into battle see his banners go then the second verse says at the sign of triumph satan's host doth flee on then christian soldiers on to victory hell's foundations quiver at the shout of praise brothers lift your voices loud your anthems raise that's the reason why i use the word brothers he had a he had a bunch of boys that he was marching to a uh, uh, to a festival and he wanted to have them a song to sing but he wanted to have them a song that would that teach him a lesson how that this as they marched to this festival and they were they were going to celebrate uh the uh actually the coming of the holy spirit of god on the day of pentecost and on and and, and empowering and indwelling the uh the believer of the lord jesus christ that uh th this gave us the 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 strength that we needed to help to fight the the forces of of evil that we're going to have to fight but but right there in the very front of the line the the bible says that uh, this song says said that uh, uh, christ is the one who's going to lead us that's why we have that cross out in front that's what he was saying and then he wanted to show unity Notice in the, the next verse says, like a mighty army moves the church of God. Brothers, we are treading where the saints have trod. We are not divided, all one body we, one in hope and doctrine, one in charity. You see, verse 1, it teaches us that we are in a, war, in a warfare for God, not against God but we're in a warfare for God as a child of God and then that second verse we're in a warfare against our enemy which is Satan we know that and that's the reason why it's, it, it talks about how that we're to be to, to watch out because the wiles of the devil the trickery of the devil each and every day and then the third verse talks about how waging a good war warfare requires unity. And that's where it's at. We are not divided. All one body we. One in hope and doctrine. One in charity. Amos 3.3 3 says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? We're here fighting this battle together. Fighting this spiritual warfare together. One of the reasons why we have missions conferences here is because we're trying to get the gospel out around the world. And in one very set, real sense of the word, that is helping to fight the battle. Because the devil does not want a lost and dying world to know about Jesus Christ. The devil does not want your loved one to come to know Christ. The devil does not want your 
your loved one who has strayed far away from him to come back to Christ. The devil doesn't want to do that. But that's why we have that's why we have church. That's why we have prayer meetings. That's why we uh, have tent meetings. That's why we have vacation Bible school. That's why we have revival. That's why we have Sunday school. That's why we we have a church bus uh, van routes. That's why we do these things. We're helping to fight the battle. It's a spiritual battle. We're doing all these right things that you have to do on a daily basis in order to fight the devil. And that's what it says, in one in hope and doctrine and one in charity. And the last verse in our, in our hymn book says, Onward then ye people, join our happy throng. Blend with ours your voices in this triumph song. Glory, laud, and honor unto Christ the King. This through countless ages, men and angels sing. Those who engage in warfare have the hope that we have got the victory. And that's what he's talking about there in that last verse. Now, Sabin was a an unusual fellow. I'm glad that he wrote this song. He admitted after that he wrote the song, he said, now nah, I wrote it kind of hastily and maybe the rhyme is not exactly like he thought or wanted it to be, but really it states, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful poem set to music there. And, uh, but, but Sabine was, uh, Sabin was a, was a kind of an eccentric type fellow when he, uh, when he did teach school. <laughs> I'm sure that the students were um, kind of amused at him because he used to have a pet bat. Yes, a pet bat that would sit on his shoulder while he taught school. Now, I'm sure that, that that kept the attention of the students uh, looking at him, or at least looking as, at the bat that was up on his shoulder. But uh, he was a bit of an eccentric. When he was 30 years old, there was a flood that came through that little town where he was the rector, if you might call him, the pastor of that church, little church. There was a flood and there was a, there was a poor little mill girl. Uh, in other words, her daddy worked in the mill, in the wood mill, and, and uh, he rescued her from drowning. She was 14 years old and he was 30 years old. And uh, for some strange odd reason, why he, he sort of fell in love with that girl and and so he but he wanted to educate her and so he asked the parents if he could pay for her education and send her away so that she could go get educated and when she came back when she was 18 years old and and he was 34 and they were blissfully wed now that's a big difference that's nearly she was nearly half his age but they were married for a long long time as a matter of fact she passed away before he did but before they passed away he lived to be almost 90 years old he was born in 1834 and he died just one month before his 90th birthday in 1924 but in that time period, they had 15 children. All of them reached adulthood with the exception of one. And they were married for, let's see, yeah, just, just 50, almost 60 years. 55 years, something like that, 56. It's amazing. And whenever he buried her 
He put on the headstone in Latin. He said, half of my soul. So they had a wonderful marriage. Had a lot of children that are, that's uh, um, up until just recently, some of them were still alive. But he wrote this song way back in 1864. Onward Christian soldiers marching as to war. I like it, it's sung in a militar militaristic style, which by the way was that uh, music that went with it was not written until uh, about 17 years later. Uh, no, I take that back, it was 18, uh, it was written in 1864, and I think it was 1870 something that it was, uh, the, the music was written. It goes like this, onward Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before, Christ the royal master leads against the foe, forward into battle, see his banners go. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus, going on before. I just would think it would be kind of exciting to see those kids marching from his church over to that festival. Not sure exactly how far it was that they had to march to, to another little community just down the road there. As these boys are marching with the front boy holding a cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, a one that represented a cross of the Lord Jesus Christ and some banners uh, uh, which uh, uh, spoke of the wonderful and the majesty of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they're singing this song as they're marching along. And what a sight that must have been. And to be able to see and to behold. And uh, now for, for, for years, for decades, we've been able to sing this same song. And I think it's a shame that there are some denominations that are leaving this song out of their songbooks, casting it aside, despairing the, the words to it and the tune to it. But in reality, all it's te teaching us is, listen, we're in a battle and we're in this battle against the devil. And we realize that, that as good soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to do what Paul said to Timothy, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Let's bow our hearts. Thank you, Father, for this time we've spent together. Thank you for this song, Onward Christian Soldiers marching as to war. And I know that uh, we are in a war with the devil and sometimes it seems pretty hard. Sometimes whenever we're in the middle of a fight to realize that it really is just the devil. So Lord help us to recognize that and, and to use those that armor that you've given to us and that's the word of god to use prayer to use the the the, the means that we have of the holy spirit of god that can teach us and to help us and to remind us of what we can do as we walk through this christian life and lord we want to thank you again for uh, this day, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for your spirit. And thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to, to serve you and to 
serve on the same battlefield as uh, our pastor. I'm thankful and grateful for that and for these other great folks of Cornerstone Baptist Church. It's wonderful to be able to serve on the same battlefield with them. Help us to win victories for you. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.